Hi, I'm Lily Newman, the host of Viewpoint, and my co-host Susan Salomon will be back next time. And welcome to Viewpoint. What concerns you concerns us. And today's guests are Colleen Wagner, John Muller, and Nicole Malgarinos. Okay? Thank you. And the, they're from Pleasantville Strong, a coalition in Pleasantville. So welcome, and I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for having, for having us. us. Could you tell us how Pleasantville Strong got started? So uh, Pleasantville Strong started at, in around 2015. Uh, and it was the result of us seeing, like many of the communities in Westchester County, um, the opioid epidemic had really sunk its teeth into Pleasantville and all the, you know, all the other communities uh, around the area. And we just started seeing kids overdosing, unfortunately in some cases kids dying, and we felt like we had to do something. So um, we reached out to uh, Student Assistance Services of Westchester, who's a great not-for-profit partner uh, for all things substance abuse prevention. Mm -hmm and they helped us connect with a drug-free communities grant. We did some work on that for about six months or so in, pre in preparing for mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to fill up the 12 sectors of the community right. to be part of it. Uh, we qualified, we approved of the grant, and so fast forward to today, we, we're, we've been in business now for almost five years. Okay. And what are you, your goals were to, I guess, make people aware about the epidemic <coughs> that's going on and Prevention. So, what are your goals, and where are you at? Well, one of the things one of the things that we really like about Pleasantville Strong is how uh, dynamic it can be and how agile it is. So, this started with the opioid epidemic, mm -hmm. and you know, thankfully, we've seen somewhat uh, of an ebb in that. Uh, overdoses are down, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and deaths are down in, in Pleasantville in particular. So then. You know, it's all things substance abuse prevention, so we deal with vaping. Mm -hmm. and, and now the big issue, obviously, is recreational marijuana. Right. And to his point, what we know from the data mm -hmm. uh, that we've gathered from our students, grades 7 through 12, mm -hmm. is that in Pleasantville, um, perceived risk and harm, mm -hmm. uh, that which will do you harm mm -hmm. if you use a substance, mm -hmm. for marijuana in seventh grade is at almost 100%. Right. By the time we get to 12th grade, that number drops catastrophically to about 33%. So what you're saying is that kids in seventh grade think there's a huge harm in using marijuana, but as they go through by 12th grade, they don't think there's much harm at all. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. The coalition has allowed us to, to really tap into what our community mm -hmm. in particular is concerned about right. and what's going in. And I think that's, you know, the beauty of a, a community coalition. Right. So, you know, we've evolved. In mm -hmm. the very beginning, it was a lot about education, but also mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. what people felt was harmful mm -hmm. and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we got better mm -hmm. uh, at gathering the information, we've been able to initiate um, a lot of education information and programs on prevention. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is, as a town, village, village, village of Pleasantville, where do you stand on this recreational marijuana? I mean, it's huge. It's so, I mean, we have great concerns. Um, and, you know, as a community, uh, we have been able to uh, organize, uh, com dip, you know, different partners in mm -hmm, the community mm -hmm. to meet with our school district, which has been incredibly okay. supportive, um, and also our trustees mm -hmm. we have, uh, and our mayor to try and, uh, you know, put some roadblocks in between our kids right. and the use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And I think certainly as a coalition, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're missioned with trying to reduce and eliminate underage substance use. Right, right, right. That, th that's what it is. We're not talking about what consenting adults right, right, should do or right, not do. We're talking right. about our kids. Right, right. And so well, there's grave concerns mm -hmm. about what's going on. And I think one of the concerns that we all have talked about mm -hmm. is the information that's out there, mm -hmm. who it's coming from, and what the context is of that information. Because this is a business. Right. And we're putting that against the health of our children. So, you know, we have grave concerns about that. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, I would say that what people need to understand with this whole push to, to, to legalize recreational marijuana mm -hmm. is that the push is not by people that, you know, don't believe in social justice mm -hmm. and, and that communities of color haven't been.
disparately impacted. They have, and we recognize that. But one, I think many, in many cases, they're conflating the issue between mm -hmm. uh, decriminalization mm -hmm. versus legalization. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think what we'd like to get out to people is if you really look at what the money is and the powers behind the push for uh, legalized marijuana, it's big tobacco, mm -hmm. it's big farm, mm -hmm. and it's big alcohol. Right. And all you have to do is look and see some of the investments that have been made. Uh, Coors Light's parent company put four billion dollars into a grow company in Canada. Mm -hmm. So what we what people need to understand is is that you know these. The in, in particular, alcohol and, and tobacco industry has not been particularly responsible or concerned right, that's right. about the welfare and well-being, and now we're going to allow them a legalized product right. that's going to be able to be marketable, advertising, right. and things like that. And it's going to be laser focused on kids. Right. And the one thing we do know is is that. You know, 30 years ago, the potency of marijuana was way less. Now right. it's mm -hmm. about 90 percent. Right. Uh, we are starting to see uh, documented cases of marijuana psychosis mm -hmm. with young mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. um, because their brains are developing. So in general, I think that's the main thing is that we shouldn't be conflating, at least in my opinion mm -hmm. as a parent, we shouldn't be conflating the decriminalization right. versus the retail right. uh, legalization. You, you know, we've got the benefit <coughs> of uh, other states preceding us who have 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 legalized it and, and what the results have been right. and, and you know I think we need to to learn from that 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 a lot of the issues that they thought would go down mm -hmm. for example even alcohol use right. have not right. there's more kids using mm -hmm. there's more arrests there's more ER visits John Nicole and I were recently at a so Pleasantville is a village within right. the town of Mount Pleasant and uh, their chief of police came in and said for the first time they're seeing marijuana overdoses right. Right. And that's not something that that's we've something faced we've before, that's right. you know. And so again, it's really about the safety, mm -hmm. you know, of our kids, and 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 it's, you know, what's been presented in the budget is is to legalize recreational marijuana. And I take issue with recreational, the word recreational, mm -hmm. um, because it's become a coping skill. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no money in anybody's budget for pre pre prevention, right. for education, for treatment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to open this, the can of worms and we're not going to be prepared for what we already know That's in the other right. states that have right. legalized it right. is going to happen right. here too. Right. Right. And in response, our community mem members have come together, mm -hmm. our school board, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as our board of trustees. Um, both bodies put together resolutions uh, opposing retail sales okay. of marijuana. Uh, within the village of Pleasantville. It was really very much of the, the body of that resolution had to do with being informed by the public health model mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in terms of proximity of retail mm -hmm. locations, of density um, in any town or city, this is an issue. Um, in Pleasantville, what we looked at is uh, where are those youth-centric spaces? Where would you put a retail uh, uh, environment or, or, or sales? Mm -hmm. Where would that happen? How would it be marketed? Mm -hmm. The reason that we're concerned with that is that because the public health model also tells us, mm -hmm. see alcohol sales okay. and tobacco sales, um, that the more uh, of a product mm -hmm. that you're putting out there right. in a smaller space, mm -hmm. we know that youth usage goes right. up, right? And perception of risk and That's harm right. goes down. Right. This is what the public health model states. Um, and to that end, our village board was able to pick up the mantle, and maybe John would like to talk a little bit about that, um, and have a hearing mm -hmm. uh, uh, around the zoning uh, for retail sales in, in Pleasantville. So it sounds like through your town and, and people coming together that you rezoned to So we, help we didn't rezone, uh, but I mean, one of the unique issues we have okay. in Pleasantville is we're small. It's okay. 1.6 square miles. So there had been some talk in other communities that if this goes through, mm -hmm. you know, they would put some sort of resolution on that you couldn't have it within, you know, 2,000 feet of a school. Right. We don't have a space right. like that because we're Got so it. small. So a resolution was put forth, and, and, and that's where the beauty of having these community partners in our mm -hmm. coalition mm -hmm. has become so helpful uh, because we have doctors and we have people who have served on the board that mm -hmm. have been able to help. And we asked that whatever the state was doing, right. um, that we put in a resolution that we would not permit retail sale within the confines of Pleasantville because there was some back and forth on whether that would be part of the governor's bill. Right, so right, we wanted right. to get ahead of that. Right, got it. Um, and I think that um, you know, because Small. we have all these partners, we mm -hmm. were able to leverage the board and the school board as mm -hmm. well. And we would encourage other 
communities to do the same. I, I, I think there's some trepidation sometimes with people thinking it's too complicated. Right, they don't know. Your mm -hmm. local government is there for, right. your, for right. your community. Right. Uh, and our, we were lucky. I, I'm proud of what our, <coughs> our village board did. Right. did. Right. Um, and I'm eternally grateful to Student Assistance Services mm -hmm. who have been really our mentors um, in, in how, to, how to make some changes right. and get prepared for this. Right. We need to be prepared for this. And it sounds like you guys are ahead of what might be coming down the pike mm -hmm. because eventually it'll be maybe be legalized but it sounds like you've insulated your community that you won't have retail shops in your town i think i think right? well, i think yes i think what we came up with was when, when this started to be floated about and it looked like it was a reality a lot of people use the term well it's not if it's when right it's inevitable mm -hmm. and they were using a lot of terms like that but our position was, yes, let's get out in front of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we weren't really interested in whether or not, uh, you know, a local ordinance would uphold in state law. Okay. Because there's, there are parallel, uh, you know, benefits to this. And one of the biggest ones was that we said, you know, made a loud and clear statement to the people that might be voting this week, mm -hmm. like our senator, mm -hmm. Senator Harcum, right. that, right. you know, this village took the initiative mm -hmm. and, and passed a resolution before any state law came out. That's right. And that's very important because yep. what it does is it shows advocacy, it shows mm -hmm. you know interest in a position. I mean, look, all three of us have been, and I've seen you at a number of uh, public hearings mm -hmm. that Senator Harcum has been mm -hmm. nice enough and generous enough yes. to put together. Mm -hmm. And in those hearings, I see two groups of people. I see either those that are, that are proponents of it because they have a financial interest mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. or they have people like us that are just parents right. and teachers right. Right. and police officers right. and you know community members that say this is just not going to be a healthy or a good thing. Right. And you know, the one thing that we have to always you know look to is we have some past data that we can build off mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. We have metrics we can look at: Colorado, mm -hmm. Washington yep. State. Uh, and, 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 and about three other, uh, Oregon, I believe, right. that's well, three. Washington, D.C. Yes, and D.C. Uh, so what we find is that none of the things that, they, that the proponents of legalized marijuana said would come true mm -hmm. did. Right. In, Cal in California, they've gotten half of what they estimated was going to be the tax revenue. Got it. At the same time, in Colorado, mm -hmm. they say for every dollar that mm -hmm. they brought in a tax revenue, mm -hmm. they spent $4.25 in emergency room visits, right. police mm -hmm. calls, ambulance mm -hmm. uh, trips, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of there's a lot of misinformation, but but it's such, it's such a crazy thing to to not look at these other states right. and see what's yeah, happened right. and not say you know how can we go down this road so willingly and so quickly. Right. right. The other the other piece <clears throat> I think that was really important to all of us is the message that we sent to our kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is is that even if whatever the resolution was would have been in conflict or needed to be adjusted. We want our children to know that we believe that this is a harmful drug right, right. for anybody's brain that's, right. that's under mm -hmm. the age of 20. That's right, which is what you said. And anyway. so it right. was a message right. that we right. needed to send, right? Uh, this, because I think all of our concerns come out of the research shows mm -hmm. right. clearly that the longer we can keep a child away from substances, right. the better their brain's going to that's be. Right. It's a developing brain. Right. So we want to keep them as far away from it as we can. So I think that, I mean, that was probably one of the most well attended villages meetings yes. we have ever had and I know because yeah. I used to serve on right, the village right, board right, right. we have a lot of empty seats right. in our meetings right. um, that was a huge message to our kids right. that it's harmful that we're concerned mm -hmm. about you um, and so I, I was really happy you know just just on that and, and, and again Agreed. you know that they were great partners and the senator has been a great right. partner to us and it's Agreed. amazing what you've accomplished and I think when you say other villages and towns mm -hmm. can do this but I think when they think of it, it's so overwhelming that they don't know where to start. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. I would rely, yeah. as to Colleen's point, heavily on your uh, sector partners. We yeah. couldn't have done this without the village. Um, you know, the, the mm -hmm. coalition members who are working as physicians or accountants, mm -hmm. they don't know how to do an environmental assessment right, right. and bring a new a zoning law to the county. I mean, there is a whole process. Right. Uh, but there are experts, uh, and yes. those folks believed in what the community was saying around their concerns. Concerns, and we're able to pull those resources together um, to get that assessment in, to provide mapping services. Mm -hmm. uh, to Colleen's point before, we literally, the community was able to layer maps of youth-centric spaces okay. in the community. So these are schools. Right. Here's a layer of schools. Right. 
here are a layer of recreation and parks, Got it. Uh, and so on and so forth, arts, entertainment, restaurants. And what we, what we found is that you literally couldn't go 200 feet, mm -hmm. sometimes 20 feet, um, before you came upon another youth-centric space within the retail environment. So what does that show? So what that shows is that typically um, zoning laws are written to say, well, 500 feet away mm -hmm. from uh -huh. from a retail and you know a, a school a youth centric mm -hmm. for a retail. Got it. Right. And in this case, that was not possible. 500 was is a huge reach. Right. That's right. just right. never going to happen. Right. In many communities, there mm -hmm. are already laws in place that mm -hmm. say you can't have a bar. Right. Or an alcohol right. beverage provider. Right. X amount mm -hmm, of feet mm -hmm. away from a school. Right. So again, leaning on and being informed by the public health model. None of this is new. Right. We need to be looking at retail marijuana in the same way that we do all other substances that are regulated and for adult use only. So then when you did your map and you're layering and you saw that you can't go more than maybe 20 feet in some cases, before right. you get to kids or a place mm -hmm. where kids would be, that would mean that they would put a, a shop, a dispensary in those areas. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right. if you didn't put in any type of uh, change to the current code, you know, any business could go in any area. Right. Got and it. And so this way, by us petitioning and, uh, the board and asking them to put a resolution, it would disallow that because at the time, this was a couple of months ago, there was a lot of question as to whether the governor was going to put Right. that language right. in or right. not, and we want right. to be ahead of it. And, and, and Lillian, just sort of to your point, it, John really was the, the, the kickstarter right. uh, of uh, Pleasantville Strong, but it, 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 we didn't set out necessarily right. to be this big sort of advocacy group. We Why were not? looking to protect community right. members, right. and it was not difficult to do. I mean, there was some planning and student assistance services, which is, you know, a, a county sanctioned mm -hmm, organization, mm -hmm. were really our roadmaps mm -hmm. to how to do this. And it wasn't awfully difficult. Got is it. it time? It is. Mm -hmm. But we started with a small group of people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then luckily we were fortunate enough to bring Nicole on as our co you know, coalition leader a couple of years later. And we were ready for right. this. And you know, I would encourage any community, right. one, to contact student assistance services or contact us. I was going right. to say that. We would that. be happy uh, you know, to, you to meet with anybody. You could give number because or your email. Because whatever's right. going to happen, there's more to come. That's right. right. This, this is, is a business just, that we're right. fighting and there's more to come. Because you think about if you have Colorado and you have Washington, you have all these other states that are clearly telling you this isn't working. Right. You know, arrest rates are up. There are more shops than there are McDonald's and Starbucks in Colorado. Why would we think that we would do this mm. here in New York and in, in our communities? Why aren't we listening? Right. And it's just not a good business plan. Right. If you were going to open a bagel shop, right. you would have a three to five year business plan mm -hmm. so that you could find out and make sure you were complying with all the existing health codes right. and everything that goes to. around. And, and so for something as simple as that, we, we look at it as a thing of importance. Right. Um, we need a lot more time. Mm -hmm. We need a lot more information. Um, I would encourage people and other communities to look very closely on a day-to-day -day basis uh, uh, to the data that's coming out of the states that have legalized because there's something shifting all of the time. You know, they're uh, in Washington quite recently, they've been trying to regulate, figure out how to regulate edibles because they're so potent mm -hmm. and they're seeing youth poisonings and overdoses. Right. Um, and, you know, so they're thinking about things like, well, do we tax that uh, uh, at a higher rate? I mean, these are things that I don't right. think they ever anticipated right. no. having to deal with. Right. Nor, right? nor do we have the technology to, right. to measure right. marijuana. Right. For driving, right. for operating machinery. That's right. We, right so the technology none. isn't where That's you know right. we need it to be. One of my really grave concerns right now is the information that's out on the internet, and uh, you know that there are uh, for-profit organizations mm -hmm. sort of looking like not-for-profit organizations and having similar web pages and right. similar names and putting information out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily. Um, 
Correct. Okay. And what I would ask people is to really look at what you're reading mm -hmm. and where it's coming from what and what the point. motivation right. behind it is. Because, look, we could all put out lots of things with numbers right. and make the numbers look the way we That's want. Right. But there's a big difference between somebody who's going to make some money right. telling you what's right and right. there's another when you have people who are just looking for safety. Right. So right. I would encourage people to, really, very, very good to really look at things more carefully. And even if you look at the polling, uh, you know, the polling may, may tell you that uh, the majority of New Yorkers are in favor of uh, in favor of legalization of mm -hmm. marijuana. But when you drill down and you ask a person, say here in Carmel, you right. say, "Well, let's say that we can we're going to legalize retail marijuana, and you're for it. Uh, do you propose it should be allowed to be next to a daycare center?" Right. Mm -hmm. The ma majority of people are going to say no. Right. Right. And and then you start extrapolating on that and mm -hmm. say, "Well, lots of kids go to McDonald's, right. and lots of kids go here and go there." Mm -hmm. And it just it. it th when you when you put it in that context yes. to see where you live and and the exposure that young right. kids are going to get to mm -hmm. it, where does it go? And right. th that's when you'll see the people who say, "Well, I'm not for that." Right. Mm -hmm. But th these right. are the things that we need to deal with now right. because once it becomes legalized, and you know, make no mistake, big tobacco and big mm -hmm. alcohol have lots right. of money invested lots in this. Money. They're hyper focused marketing. Uh, they're going to make sure that they do everything they can because their business model is if I can get someone uh, to start smoking marijuana, right. the younger I can right. and the longer they do. And it's not unlike the, vape, the vaping situation. That's, That's right. another tool, I think, that really what I love about the, you know, the construct of Pleasantville mm -hmm. Strong. Mm -hmm. the, tool, the, the toolbox is we can really move around quickly if we need to. Mm -hmm. For example, we started with opioids mm -hmm. and then we're, we're dealing with recreational mm -hmm. marijuana. Vaping became a right. big deal and we're right. addressing that. Right. So, you know, any of these coalitions, and people need to know that, are, are great because I don't, I don't think anybody can say, I can tell you what the next right. big drug or, uh, or, or substance is going to be right. in five years. But right. when you have something like Pleasantville Strong in place, you're able to deal with that quickly. Right. You'll see it coming earlier mm -hmm. and you'll be given evidence-based right. and scientific information on how to manage it. Right. You guys great are doing, point. Uh, it is, and you guys are doing a great job. I just want to, the phrase opt out. Mm. So that's what Pleasantville did. It, did you opt out? I mean, and we use that term a lot, so, so help me. So help it's help unclear people. right now what the language is going to be okay. if this were to pass. Okay. And uh, recently in the newspaper, there was a comment that, that communities could opt out right. of right. having to, to do that. And then they also didn't answer what the tax implication of right. that would be. Right. So what we did is to say that we, we're, not, we're, not going to, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to allow uh, recreational sales in the community in case the resolution that came out right. didn't give you an opportunity to opt Got out. It. And there still may be work to do because right. Certainly, a local law can't be in opposition to a state law. Right. So we would need to relook at that. But again, we wanted to get ahead of it um, so that there was something in place because this came up very quickly. Did, yeah. This was thrown did, in a budget, which right. thankfully that wasn't yes. allowed to happen. So there wasn't a lot of talk right. about it. And right. I think that that you know Albany heard um, communities to get it out, and right. they did. And now mm -hmm. there's some time to talk about right. this. This needs to be done right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you and I well know, um, being in the mental health mm -hmm. world. There isn't treatment now right. for children Thank you. Uh, with right. substance mm -hmm. abuse issues. Right. We introduce a drug that's going to be more accessible right. and more potent than right. anything that we've seen. Where is the treatment going to be? Where is the money going to come right. from? Um, it concerns me. Right now, there's maybe two. Right. Maybe. Facilities in New York mm -hmm. that'll treat a child under 18. That's right. Not many. You know, uh, so there are real concerns about, you know, mental health of our kids. Right. So your motto is don't don't plan to opt out. Do something now mm -hmm. so regardless of what goes on, you're at a position and a place to say, not in my community. Especially for the right. legislators. When those yeah. people are looking and they do pay mm -hmm. attention and they do show up to these meetings, mm -hmm. they, they came. Yes, they I mean, right. representatives from all uh, our legislative uh, representatives came. Uh, even if they didn't come personally, they sent a representative. Right. And it's a very strong message to say this village took a position, that That's village right. took a position. Right. That's how... Uh, that's how county executives, uh, you know, t test the water. It, yes. Right now, the opt-out is for cities that are over 100,000 yes. mm -hmm. or counties. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right now, Suffolk, Nassau, right. mm -hmm. I believe Dutchess and Putnam okay. have already okay. said, you know, they're out. They're not. They're right. not going. They're going to opt out. Really? Right. Yeah. That leaves Westchester County Executive mm -hmm. Latimer has said, "Wait and see. Let's right. let's mm -hmm. see what happens." But even he has said, you know, it looks like at this point it's about 50-50. I think when you start asking very pointed questions mm -hmm. about not just legalization or social justice, right. 
I, you start asking like the logistics of everything. Right, right. You'll find many more people that are opposed, and so maybe they'll opt out too. But we'd like to, we'd recommend to everybody just get out in front of it now because right. if even if your village board doesn't go for it, mm -hmm. you're sending a message that mm -hmm. you're taking a position and you're paying attention. Right, and then the people, the elected officials, are going to have to listen to what you're saying if more people are saying no instead of just not yeah. saying anything. Right. Senator Harkins you're, listened. Yeah, and you're, you're raising awareness. Right. Yeah. You can't presuppose that our legislators have all of the right. information. They, they have a lot going on right. and a lot on their plates. So it's, as a constituent, if there's information that you want that's evidence-based and real data right. that you think that they need to hear, mm -hmm. go right ahead and make that move and okay. send them that information. You know, we're almost out of time. Would you look at camera three, that be for Nicole, mm -hmm. and give them, if you don't mind, the, your website where they can get more information. Yes, for you, you. you can find us at pleasantvillestrong.org. That's our website. You can also find us at strong, pvillestrong1 for Twitter. Uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook, very easily found. You are, can also email Email me if you'd like some more information. Again, my name is Nicole Malgarinos. This is a long one. Maybe we can put it up. <laughs> you it's have right. It, just give it's it to him anyway. Pville Strong Coalition Coordinator at Yahoo. Uh, thank you so much, Elaine. Oh, thank you. It was really exciting having you here to discuss this because this is here. It's not down the road, and and he has to vote in a couple of days. Yeah, I no think the budget, mm -hmm. and who knows if it's in, if it's out because you hear different stories. Well, I we appreciate know. you providing yes. us with the venue here and, and on all the topics. You come um, back point, we really and you, we'll, we'll just keep doing it. this and figure out it. what we can do to stop this from happening. So we just keep talking. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Elaine. No, thank, thank you. you.